Hello everyone and welcome back to Towergate. It is Towergate day number 428, Saturday, May the 12th, 2018. Thank you so much for tuning in to this early weekend edition. Today's video is going to be a two-part video because there's simply too much information to cover in one video. Um, so I do appreciate you tuning in. It's a lot of information and it's uh, I know it's kind of hard sometimes. I try not to do a lot of reading, but unfortunately a lot of times it's just facts and information and I need to write this stuff down. And uh, to keep me, you know, uh, you know, so that my flow of information to you is not all uh, scattered and hard to understand. So it's easier if I take notes and I read from those notes. So anyway, I'll do the best I can and try to make it um, easy for you to under understand, even though I am reading to you. So um, let's go ahead and get started because there's a lot to cover. And um, so I want to talk really about what has happened in these past 24 hours. As you know, on uh, Thursday night, well, actually it would have been Friday morning, at about 4.30 a.m., I uploaded a video, about a five-minute video, five, six-minute video, um, because of a breaking story. That story, of course, was that, um, uh, that it's been reported that the Obama administration, via the FBI, had planted a spy inside the Trump campaign. So that's a major piece of breaking news, one of the biggest stories probably since we've been um, covering this uh, uh, Towergate, whatever you call it, scandal, I don't know what you want to call it, but since I've been doing these videos, this is one of the, if not the biggest thing that we've learned. And it's uh, going to change everything from this point forward, especially if this turns out to be true, and it appears very likely that it is true. So basically what happened uh, and what got all this going was uh, apparently on Tuesday, the New York, uh, the Washington Post wrote a story. And in that story, uh, which was basically a hit piece, typical left-wing Washington Post hit piece, but in that story, a couple things were revealed. One of them was that uh, what Nunes wanted was the name of this secret intelligence source who was giving the FBI information, the CIA, and he also had spoke to Mueller. This person's name had been redacted. And Nunez, of course, got this person's uh, redacted name and became curious about him when Nunez was finally able to look at that EC, that electronic communication. So he sees this electronic communication after fighting with the DOJ for weeks. He finally gets a look at this name, this unredacted name, or it, he, he gets the EC. He hasn't seen the name yet. Now he has now, but at that time he hadn't. All he saw was the name was unredacted, but he's looking at the EC. Remember, the EC was the um, intelligence report that launched the FBI into beginning their investigation. So this was revealed in the Washington Post, what Nunes was interested in, why they had this meeting on Thursday. It's what he wanted to see. It's because he wanted to see the name that was redacted in the EC that he looked at a couple of weeks ago when he finally got a chance to look at the EC, and now we know why they didn't want him to see the EC, the Electronic uh, Intelligence Report, because they knew he would see that redacted name and wonder who it was and why it was there. So this is what this all built up to. And it also was disclosed in that Washington Post article that there were law enforcement informants, sources to this writer at the Washington Post, um, suggesting maybe there might be something else going on here and particularly that individual may have been more than just a source, that there may be something else going on. At least that's what Nunez believes. So then Kimberly Strassel picks up on that and she writes an article in the Wall Street Journal. Uh, and that article, which I believe appeared on Wednesday, uh, suggests that, that, um, that there was a spy in the Trump campaign placed there by the FBI and that she said that there's quite a few reporters in D.C. and people, you know, in these committees that are looking into this that no, either know this or strongly believe this is true, including Nunez. That's why he wants the name, because he believes that this person is not just an intelligence source feeding the FBI, the CIA, but rather something more nefarious, the fact that he may have been some sort of a plant. Nunez wanted to know who this guy was so he could figure out who he's connected to and see if um, if he could tie that back to anyone who might plant someone like that. Because this story is too crazy, and as we all know, as we've been covering this story, there's too many things that don't add up. 
there has to be something, other things going on, pieces to the puzzle that we have not been getting because the pieces that we now have, when you put them all together, there's big holes. Something has to be going on. Nunez is as aware of this as I am and all of you who've been following my videos. We all know that there's too much missing information and we all look at the way that they're fighting at the DOJ and the FBI to keep us from getting the information. What does that tell us? Well, it tells us they've got something to hide. Nunez is not stupid. He understands the same. So then what happens is on Friday uh, or Thursday it was, Limbaugh, Rush Limbaugh, picks up the Wall Street Journal article and reads Kim Strassel's article. Then he goes on his radio show at noon on Thursday in his monologue and starts talking about this Wall Street Journal article. This is where I first heard it. And so that got my antennae up and I listened to it. I couldn't listen to the whole show, but I listened to the monologue and I listened to some of the second hour. And now Limbaugh's take on this is different than mine uh, and probably Strassel's and other people. Limbaugh's take was that, oh, okay, she's suggesting that the FBI put a plant and what Limbaugh was getting out of that was, well, then that must mean that Obama and Comey and Lynch and the FBI and the CIA, they must have really believed that there really was Trump-Russia collusion. You know, this must be really happening for them to go to this link to put someone inside the campaign, to put a spy in there to see if he could figure out who it was in the Trump campaign that was colluding with the Russians, helping them hack the, the uh, DNC, giving this stuff to WikiLeaks, starting this campaign to take out Hillary. So this is the take that Rush Limbaugh was giving, and I, I, that did not sit well with me at all. And I thought, well, you know, I'm getting something different. When he laid out the Wall Street Journal article, that's not what I got out of it. What I got out of it was that they planted an FBI uh, uh, mole inside the campaign to help create the frame up. Because I don't believe, as most of you know, that there ever was a Russian investigation, Trump-Russia investigation, really only is a cover, but that the real thing that they were trying to do was frame Trump so that he wouldn't become president. But once he became president, because they had done all these illegal things, including planting a, 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 a spy inside the campaign uh, to manipulate things and people, that they had to cover this all up. And since Trump's been elected, it's all been about a cover-up and distraction campaign to distract people from looking at what actually happened, which is a cover-up of everything they tried to do that was illegal to keep Trump from being elected. But once he was elected, his people were gonna come in and they were probably going to learn about all this. So they had to cover it up and they had to get someone to, who could do that. Comey obviously wasn't effective at it and he spit the bit, made too many mistakes. They had to bring in Uncle Bob to save the day to continue this operation, which is a cover-up of the crimes they committed prior to Trump being elected, and then, of course, uh, to continue this dis distraction campaign, which is a campaign to uh, attack Trump and everyone around him uh, to keep this going, hoping they can turn to Congress, because I don't think they really believe they can get Trump impeached. It's a Republican Congress, and you need a two-thirds vote in the Senate. So I think the ultimate goal between now and Election Day is just to damage Trump and the people around him and the party as much as possible, hoping that they get a Democrat Congress after the 2018 elections and then they can put all this to bed. So I think this is in general what we are looking at. So after Limbaugh does his show, uh, then of course you have all the other people who follow Limbaugh who probably heard what he said and they start talking about it. So I came home and I started researching it, looking into it. I looked at the original article by Kim Strassel. Uh, I tried to find the original article by the New York Times. I took a look at um, Last Refuge. I took a look at uh, quite a few different sites that I trust, Western Journalism, uh, New York Post, Paul Sheary normally is all over something like that. Uh, I looked at some of the people who have been covering this story a lot, um, Tracy Beans, who is a lot like me, and a few other people that, you know, very early on, we our antenna went up, whether it was George Webb or Tracy Beans or myself, Back when Trump tweeted out that someone was tapping his wires, you know, my antenna went up. I think Tracy Beans as well, uh, uh, Mr. Webb, other people looked at it and said, wait a minute, <laughs> there's something bad wrong. A president does not tweet out something like that just out of, off the top of his head. 
He's learned something. He knows something. And if this is true, this is this could be something really big. And that's why I started doing the Towergate videos. That's why Tracy Beans has been on the story. That's why Webb has been on this and many other things. But he, he gets so many things going on I can't follow him. But um, there's no doubt that everybody who pays attention to this kind of stuff, their antennae went up as soon as that Trump made that tweet. And this is where we are today. So I went and looked at a lot of the sources that I've followed over the past year that I rely on to get fairly reliable information. Um, and I spent a couple hours that doing that. And so, <clears throat> yeah, by it was like three o'clock in the morning and I thought, you know, this is not just a fluke. Again, you know, this idea there being a spy in the campaign, I mean, you know, there's something here, there's something going on, and that's when I did that 4.30 in the morning upload. <laughs> and uh, so I'm sure a lot of you have seen that. Um, so anyway, that is kind of the background to how I got to where I'm at today to, to go through this for you now that I've had more time to research this and um, try to get a, a, a clearer view of exactly what is going on about this uh, story with the spy being in the campaign and, and what this all means and where we go from here. So let's just go through some things here that I've collected information-wise over the last uh, you know 12 hours or so that I've been doing this research and uh, let's just see where we what we get here. Okay so um, So if we take a closer look at the key events that went down and why these events support um, Strassel's theory of an FBI spy or plant inside the, the Trump campaign, and keep in mind it could be more than one spy inside the Trump campaign. This is what I was looking into is uh, who is a spy and is he the only one? Could there be more? So let's go and do a little bit of timelining and try to line up some facts and some uh, information and see how we got to this point here uh, talking about a spy in the Trump campaign and why this is likely very, very true. So on July the 31st of 2016, the FBI opens their counterintelligence operation against the Trump campaign. Now, I believe myself that that is a cover, uh, that the operation against Trump-Russia collusion was all a cover to cover up the real operation, which was a frame-up operation against Trump. But whatever you want to call it, on July the 31st is when the FBI opened that counterintelligence operation, for whatever reason. Now the FBI, of course, did not inform the Congress about that investigation until March of 2017. That's six months, seven months later. Now. On August the 1st through the 3rd of 2016, literally the day after they opened the counterintelligence operation, Peter Zbenstrokinus, number two man in counterintelligence at the FBI, traveled to London. He went there to do interviews with British intelligence officers. August the 15th, two weeks later, is when Peter Zbenstrokinus sends loose Lisa Page that text describing the insurance policy in case Hillary lost. So you can see that things are moving very quickly. July 31st, um, the FBI opens their counterintelligence operation. The very next day, Strzok is on a plane to London to meet with British intel officers. He's there for two days. He comes back, and within less than two weeks, he's talking about the insurance policy. Last week, Nunes battled with the DOJ to get the electronic communication. This electronic communication that was generated by CIA Director Mr. Potato Head John Brennan. Only after threatening contempt of Congress did Nunes get to see the electronic communication. Remember, the EC came from Brennan. It was given to the FBI to initiate the FBI counterintelligence operation. And why would that be? Well, because the Central Intelligence Agency is not authorized to conduct 
these type of domestic uh, uh, in, um, investigations. That's the role of the FBI. So Brennan had to get the FBI involved, and we see this throughout where the CIA or people associated with intelligence, CIA, is constantly going through the back door or the side door or some door coming down the chimney to feed things into the FBI because they can't conduct these investigations themselves. The CIA is not an investigative agency in, 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 in the U.S. They are an intelligence agency and a, a lot of other things outside the U.S. So this is how Brennan was able to prompt the investigation. He created that EC, the electronic communication, and uh, that's what he gave to the FBI to get them to begin this operation. The electronic communication revealed a name that was redacted. Nunez wants that name, and now we believe that he has that name. We believe that name is likely Stefan Halper. We will get into more about him in just a moment. Remember now, the redacted name, which is the source, and the electronic communication were the authority to justify the counterintelligence operation or investigation, whatever you want to call it, and to obtain the FISA warrants. In a surprising move, Speaker Paul Ryan has backed Nunez and Gowdy and has advised Rodenstein that they need to comply with the Congress request to unredact or make available to Nunez and Gowdy the name of the person in that electronic communication or face contempt charges. Hmm, that's interesting. Why is Big Ears Paul Ryan on our team all of a sudden? Well, I think it's because he knows. He knows which way this thing's going to go, and he doesn't want to be on the wrong side of it. So the source is a top-secret intelligence source of the FBI and CIA and is a citizen and who was involved in the Russian collusion probe. So when you take a look at a lot of the things which we're about to, you will see that Stephen Stefan, however you pronounce it, Stefan Halper, meets this description that they're giving us. Halper is a foreign policy expert and a professor at Cambridge University with connections to the CIA and the British counterpart MI6. Halper is currently overseas. He is a current and former CIA operative. He is a current and former source for the FBI. He was heavily anti-Trump and pro-Hillary. He has put together these type of frame-up operations before. We learned that from his bio, which I may go into in more detail in another video. He has connections to UK spies, the intel community, and politicians in the UK. He has connections to Australian spies, the intel community, and politicians in Australia. He has connections to Alexander Down the Hatch Downer. He is a political operative. He has connections to Carter Page throughout the campaign. He has connections to George Papagalopoulos throughout the campaign. And he has long time connections to CIA, former CIA director, Mr. Potato Head, John Brennan. There is hard evidence, as is pointed out by Chuck Ross of the Daily Caller, that shows that Halper was trying to initiate contacts with low-level Trump campaign aides, Papagalopoulos, Carter Page, and Mr. Clovis. Two months before the election, Papagalopoulos received a strange request for a meeting in London. One of several strange requests Papagalopoulos would be offered, and he would accept these meetings. The requests came from Stefan Halper, but also Alexander Downer's assistant. Halper also met with Carter Page and Mr. Clovis. Halper was in contact with every official and entity in the cover-up and was in the right places at the right times 
when all these setup meetings took place. Halper's job was to get was to essentially dirty up anyone he could convince number one to meet with him, number two to engage in his requests, number three engage contacts that Halper set up, and Halper's targets were Papagalopoulos, Page, Clovis, and they were to be the useful idiots and targets to be dirtied up initially. Now, dirtying up simply means to make the targets look like they were Russian allies or Russian actors. Halper's job was to provide Brennan with the optics needed for the electronic communication referral, which Brennan used to trigger Comey and the FBI to begin the counterintelligence operation or the Trump frame-up disguised as a counterintelligence operation, whichever of those two you choose to believe. The fraudulent origin in combination with the October 2016 FISA warrant needed for surveillance would drive the insurance policy that Strzok described to Page. We do know that Papagalopoulos, from sources close to him, said that he did question Halper's contacting him because of the randomness of the contact and the questions that Halper asked him. Halper, on one occasion, and we covered this back months ago in the Towergate video, Halper, on one occasion, said to Papagalopoulos, he said, quote, George, you know about hacking the emails from Russia, right? These are classic techniques, classic techniques for this sort of a uh, setup uh, operation. Now, Halper, according to the EC, the electronic communication, had targeted four people for surveillance. This is what was in the EC. Papagalopoulos, Manafort, Carter Page, and Rick Gates were all targeted for surveillance as was outlined in the electronic communication. And notice that these are the guys that Mueller targeted first. So, this gives us a lot to think about and even more questions. Was Comey being kept in the dark, being duped? Was he only being given just enough information that he needed to get him to act and do the things they wanted him to do without letting him in on everything that was being put together behind the scenes, which would have been Brennan. Remember, Brennan initiated this. His, uh, this contact, because at this point, FBI is not even in play. They're not even in play. This is the CIA, this is Brennan. And probably, my guess, is working with the rotten Reverend Clinton. It's my guess. I think we're going to get evidence at some point that shows that this was a Clinton-Brennan operation in the very beginning. It's Brennan who would have had the contact with, with Helper, uh, who's you know CIA living in London and all that stuff. And we can see how it was all put together first by CIA and Brennan and then put into the sphere of the FBI. So the question is, was Comey being kept in the dark? I mean, did, did Brennan sit down and say, yeah, we're going to run this secret operation? that we got going, that we've been doing, and now we're going to pass it on to you. You can play dumb like you don't know anything that's going on um, or whatever to, to protect yourself. But uh, here, here's this you know, information this, uh, in this EC. You can use this to start the investigation and to get a FISA warrant. See, I don't think that happened. I think Brennan, being the spooky character that he is and the relationship that we know the CIA and FBI have, that's not how they generally work. Uh, the CIA and the FBI dupe each other all the time. Been doing it for years. So my guess is at this point, Comey does not know uh, at this point. He gets this electronic communication. He probably assumes it's legitimate. So was Comey being kept in the dark? I think he probably was. <clears throat> was he being duped? I think he probably was. 
did Brennan urge Strzok to go to London to meet with Halper, or maybe it was pre-step. One of those two. They're the number one and number two in counterintelligence. Someone prompted them to go to London and, and meet, well, most likely, almost certainly, with Halper. Who would that have been? Comey wasn't that far along. The FBI investigation wasn't that far along. Who was it that prompted Peter's been stroking us to go to London to meet with Mr. Halper, allegedly, or what we believe is probably the purpose, probably the person he met with. Um, this is this is tricky. We need to find out who it was that motivated either Prestep or Peter's been stroking us to make that trip to London. Because now this is what we see is where the FBI counterintelligence begins to work in concert, in a sense, with the CIA, British intelligence, and these other players. <clears throat> now keep in mind <clears throat> that this whole time we know <clears throat> that the GCHQ was involved in surveillance in the Trump Tower back in 2015. We know that there were these private contractors being given access to the database, uh, the NSA database, prior to all this. So there was already an operation underway, already an operation underway to collect intelligence, which now leads me to believe that this was instigated more from the CIA than from the FBI. And we know that Confusion GPS is a, is a firm that's certainly a CIA. Confusion GPS is essentially CIA, okay? I mean, uh, we've been through this pretty much. Confusion GPS, uh, yeah, they had that kind of FBI connection thing going, but Confusion GPS is a contractor for the CIA, plain and simple. So it looks like this was a CIA operation at the beginning, and it morphed itself into the FBI investigation because only the FBI can conduct domestic investigations, get FISA warrants and things and such. That's not something that the uh, CIA can do on American soil. They're a foreign intelligence firm, and they're not an investigative firm. So I think we have some ideas about those questions. Next, has Peter's been stroking us, or Prestep informed Horowitz about these actions and contacts. Well, you know, with what Horowitz knows about these guys, and we can assume that both Peter's been stroking us and Bill Prestep are cooperating with the Horowitz investigation, can we assume at this point that they have given this information to Horowitz? I mean, would they... Would they, when they're looking at jail time or, or, or possibly uh, fines or God knows what else with Horowitz, would they sort of pretend to cooperate with him but withhold this information, knowing he's probably going to learn about it anyway? I doubt it. My guess is Priestep and Peter's been stroking us have probably had to inform Horowitz about the origins of this operation, whatever you want to call it, whether it's an investigation, a frame-up, whatever you want to call it. The origins of this, probably, uh, which Prestep and Strzok were involved in, uh, they've probably had to inform Horowitz of that. So the question is, does Horowitz know about all of this that we're talking about today? If so, Will he reveal it? Well, the fact of the matter is, he may have to now. Well, in fact, he will have to now, because now we know about it. Things got very, just got much more difficult for Mr. Horowitz. When did Nunez figure out that the redacted name was not just a source, but a plant or an operative put in place to help put together, set up, the frame-up, or the cover-up, or all the above. When did Nunez figure this out? He's been very coy. I don't think he just figured it out this morning, or yesterday, or I don't think he figured it out from listening to Rush Limbaugh. I don't think he figured it out from reading the Wall Street Journal article. I think he figured it out as soon as he saw that electronic communication a couple weeks ago. And I think that's why they fought so hard to make sure he didn't see it. 
because I think Nunez, with everything else he knows, he looks at that and sees, wow, a secret source, FBI, DOJ, and he's talking to Mueller? Hmm. Why won't they tell me who this source is? What's going on with that? Why are they being so protective of this person? Um, who are they connected to? Uh, are they part of Clinton's inside people? Are they part of Confusion GPS? Uh, what's going on here? And I think Nunez, before he ever saw the name, had probably figured out that this wasn't just a source giving information on Russians, that this was someone who was involved on the inside, probably working as a agent of the government to do more than provide information because Nunez and his committee has already finished their investigation and concluded that there was no evidence of uh, Russian collusion, Trump uh, campaign, uh, collaborating with Russians, any of that sort of stuff. He's also uh, learned that there was no underlying intelligence, really, to even begin this operation. So these things probably told Nunez that, hey, wait a minute. This is not what it appears. There's something going on here. And I think that this person, this source, is not just a source. I think they were running an inside internal operation as a plant, part of a frame up. I think that's what Nunez came to the conclusion of. And I think that's why he's being so relentless and pushing so hard and saying, you are going to give me that name or you are going to be in contempt. And now I believe he's got that name. If he didn't, he's got it now. So did Halper have any connection to or have any contact with Mr. Melion or Mr. Misfid? And remember, we got evidence from a story Kim Strassel did a couple of weeks ago that it appears that Mr. Mr. Misfid is not a Russian you know, intelligence operative or something. It's most likely that Mr. Misfid is a British intelligence operator, not a Russian. And Mr. Melion, strange character in his own right, someone who would perfectly fit the profile of someone that Mr. Happer would like to use. He's the perfect guy. Likes to brag about a lot of things, likes to meddle in a lot of things, He's always looking for a way to make a buck off of something. He's always got a scheme or a scam going. He's exactly the type of fish that would bite on the bait that Mr. Halper could put in front of him. Does Sessions, and by the way, we can assume that Mueller has interviewed uh, um, all these guys. We know he's interviewed probably a million Misfood, and certainly now we can assume he's interviewed uh, Halper and knows everything. Does Sessions know about all of this? How could he not? This is sad. This saddens me. Because I like Jeff Sessions. I'm very disappointed in Jeff Sessions. But I like him. And I don't think he's a bad guy. I disagree with him on quite a few things too. But... I don't think he's part of a deep state coup or part of this. I think he walked in the door on day one, inherited all this that he had no idea was going on. He was then railroaded by DOJ lawyers and Rodenstein to recuse himself and has probably been largely kept in the dark. But because I think as this thing has moved on, he's probably tried to protect the Department of Justice and has unfortunately unwittingly involved himself in something that he shouldn't have. And it's very unfortunate and it's possible that Sessions is not going to uh, come out of this thing looking very good. Sadly. I hope I'm wrong and there's something else going on here, but I don't see how Sessions could not know. I just don't see how that's possible. Did Hillary or one of her henchmen intermediaries have anything to do with this operation? We know the closeness between Brennan and the Rotten Reverend Clinton. And this thing seems to have started as a CIA operation. Boy, oh boy, when we tie that connection together, that's when this thing is going to blow sky high. 
That's all for video one. Go now to video two and we'll continue. Thank you.